listen only mode. Hello everybody. Welcome to this month's Great Garment Graphics webinar presented by Transfer Express. My name is Andy Curtis. I'm the training coordinator here at Transfer Express. Uh, for those of you who have joined us before, welcome back. I'm glad to have you. If this is your first webinar with us, then I am excited to welcome you. Uh, we do join you uh, once a month here at Transfer Express to give you some little tidbits and interesting bits of information about our industry. Today's topic is starting your home t-shirt business. Uh, with me on the line is Jody from Great Garment Graphics. Hey Jody, how you doing? Hi Andy. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Uh, Jody's going to be the lady behind the curtain, so uh, she's going to assist with our uh, polls here that we're going to run in just a second. Uh, before we actually do run those polls and get started, I want to remind everybody, if you have questions throughout the course of the webinar, please do type them into the chat box and we will be responding to the questions after the webinar via email. So please do, uh, do not hesitate to ask any questions you can possibly think of. Um, and uh, as we go here, hopefully I'll cover all the bases. Uh, so that being said, Jody, if you want to start us off with our very first poll. Absolutely. So the first poll is who are you thinking of selling to starting your, your home business? And this is something that's sort of important because if you're going to start the home business, if you're going to go this direction, then you should probably already have some kind of clue, some kind of idea as to who you intend to target. And we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later on in the webinar as well. So this is a topic we'll be discussing in some detail. We'll leave the poll open for just a, about three more seconds. It looks like everyone's trying to get their votes in. We do have a large audience today. It's a mixed, dip, mixed bag, Andy. 69% friends and family, 65% schools, 69% teens, 73% local businesses, and 49% online store. Okay, that's more online than I would imagine. Uh, if you would go ahead and run the second poll, Jody. And the second poll is how far in the process of starting your business are you? There is so much to do when you're starting your home business. Uh, and uh, I come from an entrepreneurial family, for those of you who have not joined before. I know I've talked about it in the past. And that's, there's, there's a lot to do. There's a lot of steps to getting your home business started up and getting it all, all legit. So uh, we know, we know, and we recognize. So we'll talk about that a little bit, too, So just to give us an idea of uh, who our demographic is and where you're at. So I'm going to close the poll in just a second here. Looks like most everybody has had a chance to vote. Well, almost half are legal and have a tax ID. We've got about 5% that are just kind of doing their research. 20% have already bought their heat press. 22% are just getting um, already sort of just starting. And 4% are already in business and just needed to freshen up. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, then that's certainly uh, more experienced veterans than I expected. Well, welcome to the webinar then, those veterans as well. Uh, the idea here today is we're going to review all the bits and pieces about starting your t-shirt business. So what I intend to do is cover some helpful tips for the people who are brand spanking new, that uh, that percentage of those of you out there who are just doing your digging, and then uh, I intend to have some bits and pieces for those of you veterans as well. So. Um, hopefully, by the time we're done here in the next 45 to 60 minutes, uh, hopefully everyone's got a good good new little tidbit, new piece of information to utilize. So again, welcome everybody to the webinar, and what say we get started? So if you're going to start your home t-shirt business, the very first thing that we need to do is to get a vendor's license. Now, uh, in the state of Ohio, it's a small fee. It's $25 to get a vendor's license. What this will accomplish for you, though, is it will allow you to purchase wholesale. Now, this is something that is more important than you might think because there are companies out there that will not sell to you unless you do have a business license, a vendor's license. Um, different terminology all for the same thing. Uh, there are companies out there who will not sell to you, or they will sell to you, but you will not get the wholesale price. So this is something important to have. 
and it's important to have a copy of it, to have, uh, to have something that you can fax over to different businesses if need be. Uh, this is one of those documents that you need to have filled out, have done, ready to go, and know where it's at. Now, the website that I've listed for you here is a little bit long, I see that. So uh, I want to remind everybody that the webinar that I'm giving you today, there will be a copy of all of these webinar slides available for you at greatgarmentgraphics.com on their blog. So uh, instead of feverishly writing down this website address, I know it's a little long, um, you can uh, feel free to download the copy of the slides after the webinar. But uh, that link that I've given you, if you click on it, it will take you right to the IRS's website and give you links to all 50 states, depending on what state you're in, obviously. Um, now, if you do have the option, if your state gives you the option to do it online, that's a great thing because it's immediately issued when you process online. You just print it right there on the spot. So for those of you who are computer savvy, that is a fantastic option. Otherwise, this is always the best place to start. Have your vendor's license, have your business uh, license so you can get those wholesale purchase uh, prices, so you can do business with the people who require you to have it. So this is always the best place to start. Then step two, step two is getting your employee identification number. Now for the record, um, this is one of those things that it, it, People's reaction to this can be, well, you know, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to go that far. And there's all sorts of uh, co comments that can be made about taxes and the government and so on and so forth. But this goes beyond just having the ID for, I mean, technically the reason for this is so that you have it for the purpose of tax administration. That's like the technical reason behind this. But if you want to take it a step further, again, being from the business family, the entrepreneurial family that I'm from, if you don't have an employee identification number, if you don't have an EIN, then you're not going to be able to claim the business. There's going to be tax issues for you as the owner of the business. If you have this number, you'll be able to uh, get tax deductions based on being the business owner. So this is always something that, uh, again, the thing that makes you legit, one of those things that, that uh, actually gives you the right to write off the business to have those tax breaks for being a business owner. So uh, again, the way to go about getting one, you go to irs.gov, the link that I've given you here. There's a search box you'll find right at the top of the irs.gov website, and you're just going to type in EIN, and it will take you right to how to get your uh, EIN, your identification number. Uh, the process is actually very simple. Um, it's a little bit longer than getting your uh, vendor license uh, that we talked about on the previous slide. This is one that will take just a little bit more time. It's not something that's going to happen immediately. But uh, again, these two things, these are the first two steps you need to take to ensure that your business is legit, that you've been totally set up, that you're ready to go, uh, and that you don't have to worry about tax problems down the road. You don't have to worry about paying more for uh, wholesale items than you really should, et cetera, et cetera. So these are the first two big steps to getting your home t-shirt business moving. All right, so you've got your vendor license, you've got your employer identification number, you've got your tax stuff and your business stuff. So the next question to ask yourself is location. Location, location, location. Where do I base my business out of? Now here's the funny thing. And if you've never seen this before, uh, going to local malls, shopping malls, all, all a t-shirt business really needs is about three feet of space and an outlet. That's, that's really what it comes down to. If you're going to set up a stall in a local shopping mall, uh, totally doable, totally possible. We see people do it all the time. Uh, so that's, that's the minimum. That's the minimum you need if you're going to do some kind of retail location. Uh, now, there's always the people out there that say, okay, this is going to be a home business. I'm going to base it out of home. Still, the question is going to be, where is it in your home? Do you have the space to do it? Uh, don't limit yourself. Make sure you have counter space. Make sure you have table space. When you start pressing t-shirts, you're going to discover the need to have things laid out, to have things flat, uh, to have spaces to put boxes and shirts and so on and so forth. So. Um, but if we're talking retail location, uh, three feet of space and an outlet is what you need. The other question to ask yourself when you're thinking of locations for your business, the question to ask yourself is, will I want to bring customers into this area? 
Now, if you're going to be a home business, that's great, but if you're going to do any kind of sales situation where you've got customers coming to you, customers wanting to discuss things with you, showing you artwork, bringing you things, are you meeting those customers at a public location? Are you meeting them at their business? Or are you going to let them come to your business? And if you're a home business, do you have a place in your home then, or garage, or wherever this is going to be happening, do you have a place where you can bring them? Consider that. Consider, should I be bringing them? Where am I going to bring them? What is the place that I want them to see? Okay. And then the third question is, do I need a showroom with a display? Okay. This might be a question to ask yourself maybe after you've gotten established, or maybe it's a question right off the bat if you have customers already set up and ready to go. Do I need a showroom with a display? How am I going to go about doing that? What should I display? These are all questions you'll need to ask yourself as you're getting your location set up. These are the types of things you have to consider after you've gotten your papers, you've got all your license, you're ready to go. Now it's time to start looking for locations. Now, uh, when it comes down to it, there are a ton of different directions to go with this. I know just driving down the street in our, our little city here in Mentor, Ohio, as you're driving down the street in Mentor, Ohio, there's options all over the place. There's strip malls that have open areas. There's uh, industrial parts that have open spaces. The local mall allows stalls in the uh, middle aisle way of the shopping mall. There's stalls that can be set up. And again, that, that goes to that first point of just needing three feet of space and an outlet, which are all things a local shopping mall can provide you with. Um, so there's a lot of different ideas, options, locations. So uh, another thing to think about is if you're going to be having people come to you, if people are going to be traveling to your location, you're going to have a showroom or perhaps you're just going to have a space to meet with your clients, your customers, make sure that you have a way to clearly explain directions to them. Uh, don't ever assume that you're in a part of the city where everybody knows where I'm at, everybody knows where this is, nobody's going to have any issues. Not everybody knows every city. So make sure that you have a clear, distinct way of explaining how to direct people to you from the local highways or the local main drags of your city. Make sure you know how to tell people where to get to you. So we've got our location, we've got our licenses, we've got all of our legal stuff. Um, the next thing here is choosing a name. Uh, choosing a name, it should be something easy to remember. Uh, the name of your business should be something that's not too complicated for people. You have to consider that this is something you want people to remember who you are. You want people to repeat who you are. You don't want people to have to sit there and strain to remember some long, convoluted name, something complicated. Uh, after you've chosen a name for your business or when you're starting to consider a name for your business, the next question to ask yourself is, is the web domain available? Now, not all of us are computer whizzes, we know that, but if you someday do want to have a website, then you need to consider. For example, if your company name is going to be So Right Creations, first of all, is that short enough for people to remember? Is it concise? Is it too complicated? And then once you've decided upon that name, is the web domain available? Can I make www.sowritecreations? Or do I have to limit it? Maybe there's already a website for that, so maybe I have to do sowrite.com. Um, so these are considerations to make when you're picking out your business name. Now again, even if you're not going to launch a website right now, right then, right when it happens, at least keep that in mind as something to consider in case you want to do that down the road. Now, something else to consider check to see if the name you've chosen is trademarked because obviously you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to market yourself you're going to want to advertise yourself and if the name of your business that you've chosen is trademarked you could be in trouble uh, and this is something that my family and I actually have experienced the hard way. My father's very first business, he, uh, didn't, he didn't actually stop to see if the business name he chose was, uh, was trademarked. And my father's business had to go through some changes. All the business cards, all the marketing materials, everything had to get remade because he picked something that, unbeknownst to him, was trademarked. So uh, my advice would be to go to the website I have listed here, USPTO. Uh, find out if there's a patent or trademark on that company name, and it's very easy to do if you hit that website. There's a search tool available that makes it very simple. Um, so before you settle on anything, you get signs made, get business cards made, before you start pumping money into your brand name, that brand or business that you're going to start, 
make sure you've come up with something that's not just original to your mind, but also original to the United States government. Uh, so make sure you're going to be able to copyright yourself, that you're going to be able to trademark yourself if you want to. And of course, when you're coming up with a company name, uh, not only do we want it to be something easy to remember, but we want it to be something unique. We don't want to sound like everybody else out there. So take into consideration these different things. Uh, so I've got a couple of fun little stories here on this slide about how people have come up with uh, their company names over the years. Um, we all try to be a little bit creative, and it's this is obviously the, the big challenge because, again, we don't want to come up with some super long business name that nobody's going to remember, that people are going to come up with nicknames for you, or people aren't going aren't gonna to know who you really are. We want to come up with something that's simple, easy to remember, something that will make an easy website, something that will make an easy email address, uh, so on and so forth. Um, we want to keep people in mind. Keep in mind that the average consumer has a hard time remembering businesses. The average consumer has a hard time remembering all those little people out there. And if you make it something easy to remember, make it something, a website that's not long, make it an email address that's not long, it'll make things easier for you in the long run. All right, so we've got our location, we've come up with our business name, we, we've got our name, we're ready to start moving here. What's the next step? Websites. Now, I, I know there's a, a couple hundred of you listening right now, and I can hear about half of you go, oh. Um, <laughs> websites are rough, I know that. Not, again, not all of us are, are computer people, not all of us are very website, internet, or computer savvy for that matter. So there's a couple suggestions that I want to throw out here aside from what's on this slide. Um, if you bring up Google and you uh, actually Google the uh, term free website, you're going to find a whole boatload of free website services. Okay. So first of all, if you do decide to purchase your domain name and you do decide to have a website professionally made, it's totally possible. Domain names will cost you about 10 bucks a year. And uh, website development services can be a little bit expensive depending on who you're hiring and how much money you're going to pump into it. But if you're looking for a free website, if you're not going to worry about buying your domain name right off the bat, there are a bunch of different free website services out there who will help you create your website, who will help you come up with the content, they'll give you templates to use, so you at least have a starting point. In today's day and age, you need to have an internet presence. Even if you don't have a fully blown website with internet ordering right off the bat, that would be a tall order for somebody starting off. Even if you don't have that right off the bat, at least have a web presence. And go beyond just website. We're talking a presence on social media as well. Make sure to create a Facebook page for your business. Make sure to create a Twitter account for your business. And you're not going to have a lot of friends and followers right off the bat because your business is brand new. So don't be discouraged by that. It will take some time. But getting your name out there, people will visit the website, people will visit your Facebook page, and people will hear about you that way. So once you've got this page up and running, make sure to have at least one page. You don't have to go crazy with a bunch of different pages about me, contact me, my business theories, etc., etc. You don't have to go that far. At least have one information page explaining who you are, how to get a hold of you. Make sure to include your company name. That should be the biggest thing on your website. Your company name is your brand. That's your identity. That should be something that people see at the top center, top corner of the page. Uh, keep in mind, we read left to right. So if you're going to keep it at the top of the page, make it at the top left or make it at the top center. Uh, make sure to have your contact number on there somewhere. Um, and not just contact number, but an email address too. Keep in mind that the people these days, everyone is a lot more uh, a lot more e-savvy than they used to be. People do uh, resort a lot more to email than in past years. So ensure that you have your email address as well as your contact phone number on there. Uh, make sure to give examples of what you offer, especially photos of what you've done. Uh, human beings are a very visual creature. You could go on to have a great paragraph explaining all the great things you do. And that's fantastic. But if you don't show people what you're capable of, you're not giving them a reason to buy from you. 
you have to show them things you've created. If you're a brand new company, you might not have a lot of creations under your belt just yet, but maybe you have art ideas. Maybe you have some projects you've already done for your family members. Have pictures of something. Have some kind of example of the work you do so you can get those pictures out there. And uh, as per the pictures on my slide here, another great direction to go is an eBay business. eBay businesses are more and more these days. You can find tons of people starting these eBay businesses, and they're pretty easy to run. Uh, again, hitting eBay.com and doing a little bit of research, it, it's not hard to do. And the best thing is if you do choose to go through eBay and work with uh, eBay for your business, then at least you're not worrying about creating your own website, at least right off the bat. So. Okay, so we've got your company name, we've figured out a website for you, you've got your uh, tax numbers, you've got all of your license stuff ready to go, you've even picked out a location, we've got that covered. So now, now we talk about investment. The beauty of starting your own t-shirt business using a heat press is the incredibly low investment. Now again, in getting other types of businesses started up can be incredibly expensive. If we're starting up an embroidery business or a DTG business, it can be incredibly expensive. Those materials, those pieces of equipment are not cheap. And then of course there's the option, well I could buy them used and they're cheaper, but then there's no warranties and so on and so forth. Starting a business with a heat press gets you in at a very minimal investment and it's not like a heat press limits what you're going to be capable of. Okay, so number one, if you've done your research and you choose the right type of heat press, it will last for years. Uh, not all heat presses are the same, however. So when you're heat press shopping, this is not a decision to make quickly and lightly. Keep in mind, if you're starting this business, if you're listening to this webinar and you're serious about this, this heat press will be the cornerstone of your business. If your heat press goes down, you're in trouble. So the heat press that you're going to purchase, this is something that you need to make sure is going to be heavy duty, something that's going to last, something that you're not going to get to work someday, and it's going to be burnt out, fizzled, and not heating up or not turning on. So a couple things to consider about your heat press, about purchasing that press. First of all, budget. Uh, how much money do you have to spend? Now, Obviously, we all want to get in at the lowest dollar amount that we, that we can. Uh, that's, that's the idea is to make money here. But uh, keep in mind things like when we're talking budget, if you're going to go for a cheaper press, that's going to be a press that's not going to take quite as much of a beating. That's a press that might not have as many bells and whistles. So you have to keep those things in mind. What types of bells and whistles? What types of features are you looking for? Is it important that you have an auto open feature, a machine that opens itself because maybe you tend to get distracted and you don't want a t-shirt to burn or burn the burn your business down god forbid um, so what types of bells and whistles are important to you okay space we talked about location a second ago so what location did you go with are we talking that mall based business where you're going to have a stand in the middle of the mall because then you're certainly going to have some space issues did you end up going with a, a retail space where you've actually got a back room that has some room uh, because we have different styles of machines. We have clam machines, we have draw, we have swinging machines. We have machines that do these different opening features to help you out with the amount of space you got. The machine you see on the left hand side of the slide here is the Fusion. The Fusion is a fantastic machine that opens up, swings away, draws out. Uh, it does take up a little bit of space generally, so you have to make sure if you're going to go the direction of the swinger with all the cool bells and whistles, make sure you got the space for it. On the right hand side of the slide, you've got the clam. The clam machine takes up very little room. It opens like a clam at an angle. Uh, that's the type of press that would be great for some place with very limited space. Again, like that whole idea of a mall, uh, a mall stand. Uh, temperature accuracy is another thing. Keep in mind that you're going to be pressing transfers, probably a lot of different types of transfers. Uh, you're probably going to be pressing, who knows, glitter stuff, pearl stuff, regular screen printed stuff, digital stuff. Uh, so you're going to be pressing all sorts of different temperatures. So you need to make sure that the machine you choose has accurate temperature settings, that it, the temperature does not fluctuate up and down more than a couple degrees at a time, uh, and that it stays at that temperature. 
pressure settings are important too. Pressure is part of, uh, uh, we'll call it the holy trinity of printing, time, temperature, and pressure. Those are the three most important things about using a heat press, time, temperature, and pressure. So uh, does the machine you're looking at have the ability to tell you what pressure setting it's on? Does it make it easy to figure out the pressure settings? And is the pressure accurate? Uh, programming, if you're the type of person that you have a hard time remembering recipes, uh, that's basically what you're doing here. A, a screen printed transfer, a digital transfer, just like cooking. That transfer needs a certain temperature for a certain time. You'll always get instructions from companies like Transfer Express when you buy transfers from us. You'll always get instructions just in case you don't commit it all to memory. But the point is, if you have a heat press that allows for programming, you can actually program all the settings into the press. Uh, the Fusion on the left-hand side there does that. And it's actually very user-friendly. It's very easy to figure out. You don't have to be a genius to be able to put the presets in there. So are you that type of person? Are you concerned about having a machine that programs? Interchangeable platens is another thing to keep in mind. Uh, help be on the sale. This is a big deal. There are heat press companies out there whose goal is to sell you a heat press, and after that, they're done, they've moved on, and it's the next person. Make sure when you're considering what press to purchase, are you purchasing from a company that is going to support you and that press? A company that's going to stick with you and help you out if the press does bite the dust, if something does happen, if you have a short and a switch, if you have a light that goes out, are, uh, is their company going to assist you? Okay. So these are the things to keep in mind when you're considering your heat press. This is the stuff to ask yourself because, again, the heat press is your investment. This is your entrance into the industry. So make sure you're making the right decision. All right, so you've purchased your heat press or you've got a heat press in mind. Now let's talk about the transfers that you're going to press on that heat press. The first variety of transfer here is screen printed transfers. Screen printed transfers, and uh, speaking from a Transfer Express point of view here, uh, screen printed transfers are ink printed onto release paper that is then partially cured, and the curing process is completed with your heat press. Each color is printed on its own screen, so the number of colors affects the cost. In layman's terms here, folks, a screen printed transfer, we are literally doing what your screen printer friends down the street are doing. We're doing the same screen printing that everybody else is doing, but the difference is uh, instead of screen printing directly onto a garment, we have screen printed onto a piece of paper that you then apply with your heat press. And let me tell you, if you've never done screen printing, saving you all the time and energy is an amazing thing. Screen printing is a great process, but the equipment is incredibly expensive. The chemicals are harsh. You have to have a lot of different chemicals and inks. You have to have room to store everything. Everything has to be properly stored. And then there's the cleaning after you've done screen printing, when you have to clean the screen off and reusing the screen and all the chemicals involved in that process. It's very long and drawn out, and it's not fun in any capacity. So. Uh, by getting transfers, by ordering screen printed transfers, you're preventing yourself from having to do all those things because you're just using the heat press. So uh, this is what a screen printed transfer is. The kids in the picture here are wearing some of the screen printed transfers from Transfer Express. They will look and feel and act just like regular screen print. They will launder like screen print. If you blast it in the dryer every day for weeks upon weeks, yes, it's going to crack eventually, just like real screen print. Uh, so that's, that's a screen printed transfer. So you're probably asking yourself, OK, if it's not a screen printed transfer, then what else is out there? Digital transfers. Digital transfers are sort of a new process uh, within the last couple of years, and the, the technology is ever evolving. Um, something you'll discover about our industry is we do not deal with status quo very well. We are constantly pushing the boundaries, what's new, what can be done differently. Uh, so digital transfers, the concept here is uh, this is full color printing onto a printable heat transfer material that is contour cut for heat application number of colors does not affect the cost. So in layman's terms, folks, let's imagine you have your printer at home sitting on the desk next to you, perhaps. Uh, your printer at home, imagine you had loaded that printer up with a roll of white film. And then you printed some artwork onto that white film, and then you cut it out and applied that white film to your garment. 
that is essentially what a digital transfer is. Uh, the transfer in the picture here is exactly that, what I've just described. Uh, this allows you to do fantastic full color artwork, fading and shading, detail that screen printing couldn't even hope to touch. And one of the things that I know everyone hears and the first reaction is, well, film. You said film. You said printing onto white film. Does it feel plasticky? Uh, when it comes down to it, it, it is a film. It technically is a type of vinyl, but uh, don't think heavy plastic vinyl. Uh, these shirts, it's not going to feel like you're wearing a bulletproof vest. Uh, there are a ton of different types of uh, digital transfers out there. If you're concerned about thinness uh, or uh, how sheer, how smooth it is, we have products to uh, fulfill all of those different needs. So don't think uh, like you're wearing a piece of plastic on your chest. And the best part about having all these options is that we here at Transfer Express will help you choose. Our dealer service reps have been trained. Uh, we are taking a consultative approach, a consultative approach to this. You tell us what you need, how many colors you've got, uh, send us your piece of artwork so we can see it, how many pieces you need, what color garment you're working with, and we will tell you what product is best and why. The ultimate decision is yours, of course, but we will definitely help you figure out what you should have for whatever uh, whatever product you might be using. Uh, the catch to this, of course, is make sure to send your artwork. If you do have a piece of artwork and you have a question, you're not sure what to do about it, you're brand spanking new, send us your artwork before you call us. That way when we talk to you, we're not taking a shot in the dark as to what your pricing might be or what your process should be. If you send us your artwork straight off the bat, uh, it will be much, much simpler. Um, and to do that, you're simply going to go to transferexpress.com and you're going to click on the send us your artwork link that is clearly labeled right at the top of the page. Now, let's say you don't have your own artwork. Let's say that you are a company that is getting started in this industry, but you're not an artist. You don't have Corel, you don't have Adobe Illustrator, uh, the art is your Achilles heel. Not a problem. Uh, we at Transfer Express provide you with an idea book. An idea book is essentially a catalog of fully customizable designs. You choose a design, you change all the text, change all the clip art, add stuff, get rid of stuff, give us a size, color, and quantity, we send you the transfers. So in the photograph and the pictures you see on my screen here, uh, we've got layout QBA233. This is one of our more popular baseball designs. You choose this design. You tell the representative on the phone with you that I want layout QBA233. The representative will likely ask you, okay, in place of the word baseball, what do you want there? In place of the word Compton, what do you want there? And so forth. In this case, you see we've left baseball the same, changed Compton to Wildcats. And you might notice we've gotten rid of the year underneath Compton. We've deleted the year. A uh, customer gives us the three colors, uh, silver, royal blue, and red. Uh, it doesn't look like we messed with the fonts. They give us a size and a quantity, and voila. As you can see in the last, the last uh, photograph there, we've got Wildcats baseball on a black t-shirt looking pretty slick. So if you do not have your own artwork, we have you covered. Do not panic about having artwork. All right, so you've bought your heat press. You're ready to start going, and the question, of course, is, where do I get customers from? Where do I find customers from? Uh, so the there's a couple different things we're going to talk about here in this next section. I've got some a couple different ideas from you uh, for you. The three big main places to generate customers. The three big places are sports, schools, and businesses. These are the three main entities that require custom apparel. And it's easy to get business from these places. It just takes a little bit of effort on your end. Uh, again, here at Transfer Express, we have those idea books that we've discussed, our catalogs of pre-made artwork. Uh, our idea books don't necessarily have Transfer Express's name on them. You can buy uh, packs of catalogs that do not say Transfer Express's name. You can clearly label them with your company name, pass them out to local schools, local churches. Um, one strategy that I've heard a lot of our customers taking is you wait. You, you wait to see businesses open in your city. A new restaurant might be opening down the street. So that restaurant's going to need aprons, right? And they're probably going to need a shirt for their greeters to wear, right? 
So why shouldn't you be the one providing them with that? So you see a new business startup, you pay them a visit, pop a catalog in their mailbox, tell them who you are, get a business card in their hands. Local schools also. Schools need so much custom clothing, it's almost disturbing. Schools are going to need spirit gear. They're going to need uh, uniforms for all the different sports. They're going to need parent garments for all of those different sports as well. Mom doesn't want to wear just spirit gear. Mom wants to wear proud baseball mom, mentor baseball, so on and so forth. So schools are going to need all sorts of different types of custom apparel. Again, find out who your local, uh, your local school's uh, athletic coach is uh, or the athletic department or even uh, the local clubs and approach those people, approach those teachers or those administrators and tell them who you are, give them a catalog, give them your business card. These are the types of ways you can go out and find customers. It just takes a little bit of effort on your part. And of course, uh, look for ideas on our Facebook page. We are constantly, constantly trying to give you hints and tips and ideas where to find people, how to find people. So we're always going to be looking for those things and we're always going to be sharing them with you. So do come find us on Facebook, uh, Stalls, All Things Heat Printing. We will certainly give you as many hints and tips as we possibly can. Another place to go is our blog, uh, the Transfer Express blog. Uh, Stalls ID Direct has a great blog. Great Garment Graphics has a great blog. Uh, all these blogs are going to be full of tips and tricks. One of them, where to find customers, how to generate business, how to do unique things that will set you apart from your competition and so forth. Um, so just a, another place to go. And of course, sign up for the newsletters. Our newsletters are another way to help get that information out to you. Uh, anytime we have an idea, we pass that along to you. We recognize, of course, that if you're not successful, we're not successful. So it's just as much our job to help you succeed as it is to provide you with the transfer. So we're going to do our best to accomplish that. Destinations. If you joined me last month, uh, the webinar last month was on destinations. Uh, this is another great way to drum up some business. If you've got a, let's say, an amusement park nearby you, or if you've got a uh, safari, one of those drive-through safaris, or zipline safaris, or zoo, um, if you've got those types of things in your area, then people are going to be coming to those places. You can sell directly to those locations. You can sell to those parks and those safaris and those zoos. Or you can sell to people traveling to there. Uh, so this is another fun little uh, thing to keep in mind. This is a great section of business that, uh, that uh, oftentimes goes untapped. So uh, it's great to advertise that you can make shirts for people's custom getaways, their family vacations, their uh, adventures that they're taking, that sort of thing. So. A uh, group of kids that are taking a rafting trip, why should they not have shirts of some kind? So uh, destinations and vacations are another great way to drum up business. And the decorating calendar at Transfer Express, we have given you a month-by-month -month calendar of things that happen in those months, ideas on how to generate business in those months, what's going on, what is, what is happening around the country, what's going on in, in people's hometowns in those particular months that you can capitalize on. There's all sorts of things. Uh, we all know, I'm sure, everybody comes from a city that does some kind of homecoming or home days or better uh, in, in our local city here, Mentor, Ohio, they call it Better and Mentor Festival. So uh, there's those kind of festivals. Those happen every summer. That's another great, uh, either have a booth there, make t-shirts for the event, that sort of thing. Picnics, parades, get-togethers, family reunions. That was a funny little thing when I started working here many, many, many years ago. I heard uh, management make a joke about family reunion season, and I laughed, of course, thinking that it was just a joke. and Years later, you come to find out there really is a family reunion season. Tons of families make t-shirts for these reunions, so another great thing to keep in mind. So um, this is all at TransferExpress.com on our decorating calendar. And this is another great way to drum up some business. Keep 
your local newspapers in mind, what's happening in your area. Uh, here in Mentor, Ohio, we're right outside of Cleveland, Ohio. So we're actually very lucky for that, uh, that short distance because there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on in Cleveland in terms of uh, different festivals and different activities. And every, every weekend in summer, it seems like there's some other kind of parade or festival happening in Cleveland. So if you've got those types of activities going on, you have to ask yourself, how can I capitalize on that? How can I do t-shirts for a local upcoming event? Can I contact the event organizers? Can I have a booth at the event? Uh, and again, every event's a little different. Some of these events are not for profit. Some are. It all, sort of, it all totally depends on what we're talking about. So uh, have your local newspapers in hand. Figure out who's in charge of these events. Contact them. Put yourself out there. And actually, this sort of links back to a point on making sure you choose the right heat press. If you're going to be that person that travels to the events, then make sure you've got a heat press that's going to be light enough to help you travel. If you buy one of the big honking heat presses that's not very portable, then obviously the traveling heat press idea might be a little rough. So just uh, keep that in mind, too. So aside from figuring out the customers, where in the world do I get the t-shirts from? Obviously, we're not going to go to Kmart, Walmart, and buy them there for regular off-the-rack prices. Who are the wholesalers? And this is another really important reason why to do the first two steps that we talked about way at the beginning of the webinar, about making sure you've got your business license, making sure you're legit, because these types of businesses are going to require you have that information before they give you the wholesale pricing. Um, I've got four companies listed here. Uh, the two that are on the outside, Broder on the far left, and then Sanmar on the far right. These are two great locations for miscellaneous shirts, for t-shirts, button-up shirts, jackets, hats, accessories, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then the two in the middle, Teamwork and Augusta Sportswear, are fantastic places to go for actual jerseys, soccer or volleyball or baseball or football, what have you. Those are the sporting type locations. But uh, between these four suppliers, you will be able to find anything you could possibly imagine. And the best part is these suppliers know that their products are being used by screen printers, embroiderers, and heat press people. So these products are made specifically for that. For example, if you go to Broder Brothers, uh, broderbros.com, uh, if you're looking for can koozies, you're going to find the type of can koozies that can be pressed flat on a heat press. So you don't have to worry about getting these structured koozies that how in the world am I going to press on this? So uh, just some ideas. Now there's plenty of other wholesalers out there. These are just the four that we recommend you look up when you're starting. Have these people's numbers nearby. Start accounts with them. Uh, so on and so forth. All right, so you've got your first order. You have everything else down. You've got your first customer. They've placed their first order. And now how do I figure out what to charge them? <laughs> this is a question we do get. Uh, it's something to think about. Uh, how in the world do I come up with a retail price for my product? So here's the fast, uh, here's the fast formula, the simple way to remember it. When you're trying to figure out how much to charge people per shirt, our suggestion is your apparel cost, so that wholesale cost you paid, plus the transfer cost, times two. That's your retail price. So for example, let's say we went to Broder Brothers and we got a really nice uh, Bella ladies t-shirt for $3, those structured baby doll shirts that look really nice. We got a $3 shirt from Bella. Then we've got a $1.78 transfer, so $3 plus $1.78. That's four dollars and seventy-eight cents times two is nine fifty-six per T-shirt. That's your retail price. Okay, this formula will allow for you to include profit, pay for shipping, labor, overhead, all that kind of stuff. Now, this is just a rough idea. I cannot promise that this is going to work in every place in America. Uh, obviously, you could have competition in your area. And there are other strategies as well. If you're considering pricing and you've gotten a new customer to order from you for the first time, the question you should be asking yourself is, do I give this person a new customer discount to retain them? Do I knock a little bit off the price? Do I try and undercut a little bit just to secure this customer? These are things you have to ask yourself. But on a, a, 
a general basis, as just an overall general statement, this is a simple formula on how to figure out the price of your garment. Uh, I'm sure if you were to pull five other heat press businesses, they might all have their own little different variations. And once you've gotten started and you've gotten some customers under your belt, maybe you do make some tweaks to this. But this is a place to start. All right, folks. Well, get started. Keep calm and good luck. Uh, there are tons of other little tidbits that you can learn along the way. Obviously, we've only got so much time in this webinar, and there are so many topics to cover. So um, if you, I, I see that questions have certainly been rolling in. All of the questions that you folks have been asking throughout the course of the webinar, you will get individual emails addressing each question that you have asked. So do not, uh, do not fret. We will help you in every and any way we can. And the thing that I want to suggest to everybody is as you're getting started, if you have questions, if you're confused about anything about getting started in the business, give us a call. Our customer service reps are certainly more than happy to help you out on any questions you can possibly have. And if you ask them something that they don't know the answer to, they'll find the answer. Uh, we are committed to helping your company succeed. That is our goal. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot us an email after the webinar. If you think of something uh, that 30 seconds after we finish here, shoot us an email, check out our blog, give us a call. And I want to remind everybody that uh, if you are interested in joining us uh, next month, I will be coming back to you on September 12th, and we're going to talk about letting us be your artist. Uh, aside from that, Great Garment Graphics has a fantastic Corel Draw series they've been doing. Uh, the next one is August 15th. I believe, um, I believe Stephen Jackson is presenting that, so that's a fantastic webinar. Definitely join Great Garment Graphics for that. So uh, from Andy here at Transfer Express, thank you for joining, and uh, we will look forward to seeing you again sometime very soon.